And I'm very pleased to be speaking here tonight because I think this is one of the issues that we really have to take a stand on as an anti-war movement, as a movement which believes in civil liberties. It seems to me this is a very, very dangerous development that has happened. And there are lots of people now, including some of the press who supported the WikiLeaks at the beginning, who are now saying, um, well, were these leaks really so dramatic? What did they really tell us, apart from some rather embarrassing remarks made by, uh, made by diplomats around the world? Are they really of any bigger significance? And it seems to me that the importance of WikiLeaks is not that they told us things that we could never have imagined, but that they confirmed for us things that we long suspected but could not prove had happened. And that, it seems to me, is alone the great service that they have really done for us. And we should remember that... We should remember that the first leaks were about the deaths of civilians in Afghanistan and Iraq and people will have seen and you can see it again outside in the lobby the film of the killing of the Iraqis in cold blood by the uh, Americans uh, that, uh, that was part of the WikiLeaks. We were told for many many years that we didn't know the number of deaths of Iraqis and Afghans because the Americans didn't bother to count the deaths. Now we know that isn't true. They did count the deaths, but they just covered them up because they were too great to tell any of us about them. So again, if we'd had nothing else from WikiLeaks, that would have been enough, in my opinion, to confirm exactly why we were right to oppose these wars and exactly why we are right to continue to oppose the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, where more and more civilians are dying every single year. But it has also done us a service because secret diplomacy is a very important part of how the Western powers maintain their network of dictators and monarchs, particularly in regions like the Middle East, on whom they rely to keep down their populations in order to further Western interests. Because we all know if there were any democracy in the Middle East, there would not be a single pro-Western regime left in that region because everybody there supports the Palestinians, wants an end to American imperialism in the region, and would like democracy in their own country. And it is only the connection between these dictators and the Americans and the British and all the other Western powers which is really stopping that happening. So what Julian Assange has also done is that he has broken out the secrecy of that secret diplomacy. And of course, that is very, very relevant for what is going on today. Because what are the Americans discussing with Mubarak in Egypt about when he goes and how he goes? What are they discussing about what the army should be doing in Egypt? What are they discussing with Suleiman about whether they should crack down on the democracy protesters or not? These are things which should be in the public domain, which are the right of every single one of us to know. And if we did know them, these governments would be even more unpopular than they are at the moment. And that, it seems to me, is crucially important when we are looking at what is happening in Egypt. If you look at what WikiLeaks says about Egypt, it's extremely, the Americans are extremely critical of the Mubarak regime privately. They say, yes, it does preside over rigged elections. Yes, it does torture people. It does have political prisoners. It does have all these things. And yet, two weeks ago, when the democracy movement began, what did Hillary Clinton say? She said, this is a stable regime, which we expect to continue. In WikiLeaks, it is absolutely clear that the Americans and their allies expected Mubarak to stand again for election in September and no doubt to win the rigged election. Now don't you think, if you think this is a regime which practices torture, which rigs elections, which does all these things, don't you think that 
the land of the free, the home of democracy, should be the place where they are saying we want to oppose this dictator and we will side with the people who are calling for democracy and freedom and liberty on the streets. Nothing of the sort, because America would rather have would rather have a dictatorship which protected its interests than a democracy which challenged the rule of America around the world. And it's important... <laughs> and there are a number of other things that I think it's rather important that we have learned from WikiLeaks. I'm very glad to have learned, although rather terrified to have learned, that the Saudi king has been desperate to attack... Iran and has encouraged the Americans at every stage to attack Iran and has said we have to cut off the head of the snake and uh, uh, this has to happen. In other words, the Saudis who rule in the most dictatorial, undemocratic way over their own people are also trying to foment and encourage war in the, whole, uh, in the whole region. I think it's rather good that we do know about these things. And one of the things that WikiLeaks has done, and one of the things that I think we have to be extremely grateful both to Julian Assange, but also to Bradley Manning, who's also been mentioned, but who is now suffering very, very badly in prison in the United States. We have to be very, very grateful to those people and to thank them for what they have done. And I... And, I read a report of somebody who'd been to visit Bradley Manning and saying what a terrible state he's in because he's in solitary confinement and doesn't have any exercise and doesn't have any contact with anybody else. And, uh, and they said the only thing that lightened him and brightened his mood was the report of the news of what is happening in Egypt. And I think they have to take some credit, not the main credit for what is happening there, but they have to take some credit for what they did over Tunisia and over Egypt and over all the other places in the world where the secrets are now coming out. When it comes to the question of this extradition case, other speakers have already touched on it. I think that... I think that these things are always very, very difficult because when you look at, as Tony has said, when you look at anybody on the left, we have campaigned, women like myself have campaigned for many, many years against the idea that rape should be regarded as not a serious issue, against the idea that domestic violence was acceptable, against the idea that women should be treated as second-class citizens in any way. This has been part of my political life and of the life of many, many people of my generation and of younger generations, and I absolutely stand by that. But I also think we have to be aware of what this case is about. And we have to be aware there are politics behind this case, because I've never known a case which was prosecuted with such fervour over this issue. I've never known a case like this where Interpol was brought into investigating this over a case which has not even been brought to charge in Sweden. Has not even, there have not even been charges laid against him. And therefore, I think you have to say, this is not about what happened, and nobody knows what happened in this particular case. It's not about that. It's about the politics of ensuring that Julian Assange is discredited as a whistleblower and ensuring, more importantly, that when he does come to Sweden, if he comes to Sweden, and we have to do everything we can to stop that happening, if he does, there will be onward extradition to the United States. And as previous speakers have said, his fate will be at least the fate of Bradley Manning. A woman called Afia Siddiqui, a Pakistani woman, accused of attacking, of trying to kill an American soldier in Afghanistan, is serving more than 80 years imprisonment in the United States at the moment. Now, I don't believe that he will get or that he has any chance at all of receiving justice in the United States, and we have to oppose his extradition. And if that means opposing his extradition to Sweden as well, then I'm absolutely in favour of doing so, and I think we should all do that here tonight. I'd just finally like to say about the question of civil liberties. You see, when we set up the Stop the War Coalition, when 9-11 happened, when the war in Afghanistan happened, which is nearly 10 years ago now, we said this would not just lead to war, it would lead to attacks on civil liberties and it would lead to Islamophobia. We've had the speech from David Cameron, 
this weekend, where he went to Munich, of all places, to deliver a speech attacking Muslims, attacking extremists, following on from Angela Merkel, the German leader, who a few months ago also uh, made a speech attacking Muslims in Germany, and where one of the best sellers is an Islamophobic book um, in Germany. He did that, but he also did it the same day that the English Defence League were holding an anti-Muslim march in Luton. And therefore the government, a Tory government, which is cutting people's living standards, which is attacking working people over every single issue, is trying to deflect its growing unpopularity by scapegoating Muslims in the most disgusting way. And this they are able to do because they justify the war on terror. They, they have to dehumanise Muslims to turn them all into extremists to justify the killing that has gone on in Iraq and Afghanistan and Palestine and everywhere else. So, so this issue of WikiLeaks is our issue. It's not just an issue over there. It's an issue which is about fighting the war on terror, fighting for a better world, and fighting for democracy. I believe what Julian Assange and Bradley Manning have done is part of the fight for democracy. I believe the Egyptian people are showing how we can carry forward that fight for democracy. And our movement here... Our movement here in Britain has to be the centre of solidarity for the people over WikiLeaks, solidarity with the Egyptian people, and together we can change the government policy and together we can win. Thank you. Yeah.